Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to take a look at one of the newer LEGO idea sets that's going to be set number 21326 Winnie the Pooh this is idea set number 34 it has 1265 pieces it's an 18 plus set which I don't know about that one but it retailed for 99 USD or $100 and this set is remarkable. I'm really, really blown away by how beautiful it is. The tree here is gorgeous. I love the leaves and the branches. It looks amazing. And then all five of the characters included are beautiful. They're incredibly iconic, incredibly accurate, and just things that we've needed in Lego form for such a long time. And I'm really, really happy that we finally have them. The set itself is gorgeous and can be displayed in a vast number of different ways. And I cannot wait to take a look at it because it's super, super detailed and honestly just amazing. Again, this is a LEGO Ideas set. I'm hoping that this gets the treatment that other uh, LEGO Ideas sets have gotten in the past. And we get some more spinoff sets, maybe some other characters, other builds and whatnot. Although... I have a feeling it might stay exclusive to here. But this is a great set. Without further ado, let's jump on in and take a look at those minifigures and then this gorgeous, gorgeous build. All right, the first minifigure we're going to be taking a look at is going to be Winnie the Pooh himself. And this character is amazing. Beyond, super iconic, super cool, really great mold. Uh, accessories, first up, we have a very nice red balloon. I'm not sure the significance of this. Maybe it has something to do with the show, but it's just put on a white pole with a very nice balloon piece. Nothing we haven't seen before, pretty basic. There's also a very, very nice book here included. It has uh, three stickers, I believe. On the front, we have a very nice picture of Winnie the Pooh with a beehive. And then opening it up, there is some initials here for the designer, Ben A, actually. It's really cool that he got an Easter, an Easter egg in his own set. And I have a very nice illustration here of Pooh flying in his balloon. Balloon. There it is. That's a very, very nice book. Really love its inclusion. Super, super cool. The character itself has plain yellow legs, which is to be expected. Very nice dual molded arms, red and yellow. The shirt here is very nice, although I really wish it was yellow printed uh, with red printed on as opposed to red with yellow printed on because there's an awkward red line here where the it's supposed to be flesh, which is a bit disappointing. The minifigure head has full rotation and pulling that off to bit of a tight fit when you can see how it looks on the inside and there's a very nice printed mouth a printed nose and some very nice eyes there Pooh looks great probably my favorite minifigure in the set just because hey it's winnie the Pooh. piglet is the next character and they have no accessories which is a bit unfortunate uh does however have a very very nice scarf uh really cool uh that piece is nothing new though and pulling that off will give you a better look at the printing and the underside of the head of course the character here has plain pink arms and legs and hands which is totally okay for who the character is this is a very nice dark pink shirt there with some very nice line printing very accurate to what the character actually looks like and then a unique head mold here dual molded i believe because we have a light pink head and then dark pink ears there really cool we have printed a printed nose mouth eyes and eyebrows character looks great i mean i don't know enough about the show to say definitively that the character would have been better with an accessory although the scarf is very nice as well i just kind of wish maybe there was something else here but hey i'll take a brand new mold and a very iconic character any day all right winnie the pooh aside tigger is my favorite character also i think the most detailed character with arm and leg printing really really cool here this character has always been my favorite from the show he was always so funny i love the way he bounced on his tail and everything accessory here is actually a very nice um build for a very nice sack uh, we got a very nice white bag here uh, attached with a plunger piece and a grip and then you can hold the bag over his shoulder really cool kind of like a hobo sack really love that build very cool actually and very nice now that i know there's an official build for the way this uh, bag is works pretty well the character itself is really really detailed we have leg and hip printing with some very nice black stripes we have arm printing with some really nice black stripes a printed tail piece with a black tip at the end and very nice black stripes printing on the back of the head and the back of the neck and top of the head printing side of the neck printing it's crazy this figure is incredibly detailed i love the dual molded head a very nice tan mouthpiece there with a pink nose as well and then of course the tan uh, face there with some black eyes on it as well i really love they went above and beyond to cover this character in black printing i think the only thing that's missing would have been some side of the leg printing but listen that's just me being a nitpick i don't think it's necessary i think the fact they gave us arm and leg and tail printing here and back of the neck printing like holy crap this figure is very detailed probably the most detailed in the set really love this character's inclusion always such a fun presence in the show this head is wow there we go uh this head wow really stuck on there this head is much more in line with what you'd expect for a minifigure head you can see it's a tan base with orange added as an after uh, over top and that clicks in and very solidly connected minifigure really cool love the inclusion definitely best character in the set 
any award for the character with the most creative name and accessory is going to go to Rabbit here. Yeah, okay. Um, can't make fun of Lego for this. This is the show's thing. I love how they named the Rabbit character Rabbit, though. I mean, we also have Tigger and Piglet and... Yeah, yeah, okay. Names are not the show's strong suit. However, this character is great. Love the carrot accessory. Nothing new, but hey, an accessory is an accessory. We have very nice yellow coloring here. Very nice pastel yellow. Very nice Easter color. Uh, very, very cool. Um, no printed arms or legs, which is totally okay. Back printing, though, has some very, has very nice tail. Love that. We also have some hip indents as well, which is pretty cool. I believe Rabbit's a guy. I'm not exactly sure. I don't really know the genders of all the... I think Piglet's a girl. I'm not sure, though. Very nice fluff on the front here very nice belly print with a really cool dual molded head with some ears with some very nice pink printing a pink nose and then a bit of white fur and then bit around the mouth white very nice printed eyes this head is very similar to tigger's uh very cool although it's a very very tight fit it was hard to get off there the character is pretty cool maybe could have benefited from a tail piece attachment as opposed to a just a print but again that's me being nitpicky really great character don't remember too much about rabbit from the show but i'm really liking what i see here great mold great figure Actually, one thing real quick. I'm surprised they didn't reuse the, um, or introduce, I guess, the Bugs Bunny head mold. I think, I thought that they would have tried at least to do that, maybe to conserve uh, parts usage. So pretty interesting. I'm actually really glad they didn't, because I definitely thought they were going to be lazy and take the easy way out. But hey, good they didn't. And the final character in the set is going to be Eeyore. And wow. This is, wow. So good. There's uh, two pieces here. The character and then this very nice bow which just slots onto a very small hole there it's a lego friends piece you just push that into place and this mold is intense there's the underside it's got uh two by uh, two by three studs so you can attach it to anything doesn't really fit too well into a minifigure stand it's uh triple molded i believe we have the black for the hair on the top and bottom there with a very nice gray snout here with these stitches and seams going all the way around very nice sad eyes printing on the inside of the ears there and then very nice shaping for both the front and hind legs and the tail as well wow i'm just blown away by how cool and accurate this mold is and how detailed this mold is for lego idea set such a one-time only unique and just amazing mold is super, super cool. Definitely something I really appreciate. Love this character. Always a funny one on the show and really, really cool to have here. Definitely appreciate the exclusivity and the one-time use here. And everything about this is so detailed. I'm really surprised, but LEGO definitely went above and beyond and I'm thankful for it. And the last thing I want to take a look at before we move on to the build of the set is going to be the 100 Acre Wood sign. This sign consists of two stickers, one on this two by three and one on this very nice corner piece. Really love that design. 100 acre wood as well. Very nice in a handwriting font. You also have the first of many of these honey pots. It's the collagen piece with honey spelled H-U-N-N-Y. Ends are kind of backwards, but hey, that's okay. Very nice honey dripping out as well. This one is not filled, but the other ones do have some honey inside of them. There's also two leaf pieces here, and then a very nice printed wood piece on the top of the sign. And the whole thing is put on one of those Lego Friends heart tiles. Let's see if I can get this up to show you. Very cool. Works very well for landscaping design, and they use a bunch of different heart pieces throughout the set here. But this is a beautiful, beautiful signpost. Very happy to have it here. And it's just one of those extra details that they didn't have to include, but they did, and I'm really happy to be able to say like, hey, I got the 100 acre wood sign in Lego form, just so cool. All right, and now it's time to take a look at the build of the set here. The 100 acre wood sign that we took a look at a couple seconds ago doesn't really connect anywhere. It's free floating, like I said, so we're just going to get rid of that now and just take a look at what we have here. Now, starting up at the top, the tree. So I have a slight problem with it. So when I was putting these on, the leaves, I was really, really annoyed because they come off so easily. However, once you kind of get them on and leave them be, they fit really well. However, something interesting here, the leaves are made out of coral pieces, green coral pieces, and you just clip them on and makes actually what I think is a really, really good leaf. I was impressed. I was surprised. And this came right off the, uh, me building the bonsai tree as well. So it was a heck of a lot of different tree and leaf design. And I really do like this. And yeah, they, they are kind of fragile, but there's um, a remarkable amount of pose. There we go. See, <laughs> they're starting to fall again. But there's a remarkable amount of posability and positionability with these. You can, you know, drop them, <laughs> but you can wiggle them all around because they're on ball joints and putting that up and down. You know, you can get some really nice leaf designs. But again, a really big, my only flaw with this set is going to be how loose and how awkward that connection is. I think they probably could have found something better to do because, like I said, 
that really bothers me. But that's pretty much everything for the top of the tree. There are two beehives included. I'm going to pull that off real quick. We have the honeycomb piece here, along with some very nice, unique prints for bees on a clear one by one flat tile that can spin around. You can have them flying and there are four prints and this just attaches to the tree right here. There's a little stud for it. And there's another beehive up top. Two of them are included in the set, which makes sense considering all the different honey pots and everything around the, the design. And then the tree itself is made of using this very nice, um, darker nougat color and this dark tan color it looks really cool. The tan, uh, the tan, excuse me, the light gray, kind of throws me off there. I'm not a huge fan. I really wish they could recast those mixel pieces in a different color. It would make it a heck of a lot better for everyone, I think. But the tree itself is gorgeous. Despite the problems I have with the leaves, it looks really nice. And let's be honest, this set at $100 is a display set, not really a play set. And you're not really going to be messing around with it. So once you build it and set it up, I have no problem with the leaves. I think they're going to be fine. And honestly, I haven't had a problem since I built it and except for what I was just trying to do a review of it. Looking at the outside of the house, we're going to zoom in a tiny bit. We have some really nice details to go over. First thing, this is a print, not a sticker. Mr. Sanders, I really like that. It looks so nice. So really, really good uh, print there. There's also a sticker right here that says ring also. That is a sticker, not a print. There's some kind of whip bell design hanging on the door here. I'm not sure exactly what that is. A door knocker, which looks really cool. I really like that design. And then a stud to open and close the door. The door is brick built. We'll show you the interior in a bit, but I do like the brick built door. I think it looks better than a solid piece. In the front here, we have a very nice fire with a log that you can have the character sit on. There's two studs there, so you can just kind of attach a minifigure. And there we go, sitting on the log. Looks very nice. And then that can just be pulled up pretty easily. If you don't want it in place, it sits on those two studs. And that reveals the pots. There are, I think, like three or four of these included in the set. The honey pot, and then a very nice uh, pot made out of a single minifigure head. We have two really cool mushrooms using upside down bowls over there. Love that design. And then in the back here, look, it's a snail. How cute is that? Uses the dog sh the dog poop piece as a shell, which is a really cool design. And the cherries for eyes brings me back to the old days when we had the Gary for the SpongeBob line. There's also some leaves that fell on the roof here. And then on the other side, there's some more leaves and a very nice chimney that we'll take a look at when we look at the interior of the set. That's pretty much all I got to say for the exterior here. It's gorgeous. I love the mounds of uh, grass and dirt here as well, blending seamlessly into the tree. I also love how they use these very nice tube pieces to make like tree roots and everything. The integration of the tree into the house and the ground is flawless. I love the different levels and layers of dirt and grass here. And just so cool how they have like the door frame built into here with the posts and everything. It's a really, really gorgeous integration and it works super, super, super well. One more thing I wanted to show off before we look at the interior here is going to be how this set kind of comes together. So you have you have the, the base of the house here and it's open and it's flat out. And that's really cool for some some people, but there's also kind of a gap here. So what you can do is you can actually close this up. So you have just the tree here and the house is built behind it. And that does actually clip into place. Uh, there's a very nice ladybug here with some leaves and a very nice flower bed along with the very nice windows and it opens up. There's the hinge piece and that gives you a better look at the interior. We'll look at that again in a second and that clips together and you can pick that up pretty simply. There's a look at that chimney as well. And then there's a nice flower box here with some windows. I really love the in, uh, use of that piece right there. Really, really cool. Not what I was expecting at all, but I really like how you can display this set open close from any angle. It looks gorgeous. The roof tiles are beautiful. Reminds me a lot of the burr with the coloring choice there. And then on the other side, it's pretty much identical with the exception of the way the leaves are arranged. Really cool about that basket. That's pretty much all I have to say for the exterior of the set. It is gorgeous. I love the leaves. I love the grass and ground. Really cool how it has the tree kind of bend around the dirt there. That looks really nice. I love the positions of like the leaves just kind of falling. It, it's just a really gorgeous set and there's no way around it. This is one of the most beautiful display pieces I have in my, in my collection. Now let's open this up and take a look at the interior here. We have three rooms. Bedroom over here, entryway, and then the kitchen slash living room. So let's 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 look at this. So first up, we have very nice honey pots. There's another one of those prints with the honey pot, and then two of the minifigure heads. Then we also have a bed. Really, really cool. I love the poster pieces there. Very nice table as well with a little candle. And then some kind of clock or birdhouse hanging there. Along with a very nice uh, curtains for that window. Really cool. Works very nicely. And I think the bed is a very unique design, something I really appreciate. We also, in the entryway, have a very nice mirror with reflective surfaces. And eh, you kind of see it. Sort of. I don't know. Here, let's pull this tile out. And 
there we go. You can actually see my fingers and part of my room. This would be very awkward. Oh, there, kind of face reveal there. Yeah, so there's the phone. So yeah, that's the mirror piece. Really cool. Love that reflectiveness. And then I knocked it over, but there's also an umbrella stand right here that just goes in the corner. Let's put that back. And on the other side, we have a very, very nice print, uh, a gorgeous uh, sticker, excuse me, not a print. And that is gorgeous. Let's pull that out so you can get a better look at it. And it's actually a map of the 100 Acre Wood. Oh, so cool. I would love to get a house with the owl. Maybe that could be another set they do, but it's a really, if it focuses, really gorgeous, gorgeous print there. Something I'm really happy to have. I keep saying print, it's a sticker. Really gorgeous print, and it goes on to that one by one right there. There's also a very nice table with a teapot and a cup, along with a very nice drawer on the bottom there. And the door does open here, it swings inward, and then gives you a better look at the fireplace and everything outside. And then the final section, we have poo, poo sticks. Not sure why, uh, but there's a very nice display box up there. A very nice heart tile there as well from the Ninjago line. And then this box actually has a sticker on the other side. If I can remove it, it's in there very, very securely. There we go. Woo! Actually, no, maybe not. Ooh, okay. Finally got it out. On the other side, Christopher Robin's initials. It's a very, very tight fit. That is definitely not something I recommend removing, if at all possible, because that was, that was a lot more uh, effort than it was worth. And then down here, we have the kitchenette. The chimney actually has some very, very seamless integration. It goes from the stove up there through the roof. Kind of stop. It, it kind of stops there. You can see it kind of goes through and it pops up there. So from like looking at it from afar, it really does have a very nice kind of like it looks like it almost does go through the roof. So that's really cool. We also have a very nice sticker right there for a B picture. Then a really cool armchair built rather uniquely. Another one of those honey pot prints, another teacup, and a very nice table with a, some curtains there. Very, very nice continuity because both sides are built exactly the same. Just the interior is a tiny bit different. Really love that design. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous display piece. And all the minifigures do fit inside. You can take Winnie the Pooh and you can lay him down on the bed. There we go. Uh, let's grab, let's grab Piglet and you can stick him um, in the door right, oh, instead of this character in the door right there. And then maybe if you want someone in the armchair, we can get Mr. Rabbit. Very, very unique names, gotta say. Rabbit is the only one who's a tiny bit difficult to fit in because of the ears, but even them does fit in quite nicely. You just have to do a little maneuvering to get them in there. And then Tigger doesn't really fit, but you can stick him in the back there next to Piglet. And then poor Eeyore is gonna have to sit in the middle, but you can fit all of the friends inside. That's something I always really like. And you can actually probably, yeah, you can close it up with all of them inside. Eeyore, unfortunately, does not fit unless I got really, really creative. Probably could fit them, but I don't really want to force them in there. So that's all the interior design right there. This set is gorgeous. From both the interior and the exterior, everything about it is perfect. I will say the leaves are a tiny bit more of a problem than I thought it was. I just spent about 10 minutes trying to fix them back into place, and I kept knocking more down when I was moving them around and it's really not a good connection, and I really think a different solution should have been used. Maybe something using the pole attachment at the end of the coral piece. Something about that just does not work for me. However, on display, it looks gorgeous, and I cannot wait to have this on display next to my other sets. I think it's going to look amazing, and it's definitely one of the best display pieces to come out of LEGO Ideas in a very long time. The minifigures included are amazing. I love how we get all five of the main characters. The stickers here are used very well. There's a couple of them. However, I think every time they do use one, it's very purposeful and it works and I'm, I'm totally okay with that. The set itself is gorgeous. I love how intelligent the model is. Everything here is purposeful and thought out. There's just some incredibly advanced and sophisticated building techniques used. The more I think about it, the more I think maybe this did deserve to be an 18 plus set because of the way they have the tree, the leaves, different, different building techniques, how they build up the ground. They do, you know, you build in sections and you add them in. I love how the tree looks, how they integrated it so flawlessly with the build of the house, with the mounds of dirt outside of it. I love how there's a really nice patio here that all the minifigures can fit on. So you have a very nice exterior display. Before I give you my my final final verdict let's take a look at the box and the manual all right here's the box and it's gorgeous i love the black it makes the set pop so well i love how there's like this cartoon design fence in the background too with all the nice like orange and 
green and red hues pop so well against the black. Love all the minifigures there. Really nice Winnie the Pooh logo, Lego in the corner. We got a very nice stylized uh, yellow 18 plus design as well. Really cool pieces there. I always love to look at how those are made up. On the top of the box here, we have all the characters and the 100 acre wood sign. Really cool. And then on the bottom, the print continues. And this box actually does have the flaps and comes up and there's printing on the inside too. So it's a very nice and easily preservable box with some really, really cool designs. I definitely recommend taking a closer look at those if you get the set on your own. And on the back here, we have a gorgeous view of the back of the set with the interior design, pictures of how the uh, interior works, how Lego Ideas works, and then just some dimensions and blueprints for the set. Love the 18 plus design here. The boxes it really excels at, uh, but the manual here just blows me away. This manual is a work of art. First off, the cover here just shows the minifigures walking with this amazing like watercolor tree in the background. That's so cool. And on the back, I'm not sure when he Earl and so I'm not sure what this is, but a really nice hand drawn picture there. Super, super cool. And this is, this is unique. This is unique. So opening it up, we have this really nice map here with a ton of stuff printed. Bear's house, um, where Woolsey was in, 100 acre wood, Kanga's house, Sandy pit, the owl, just tons of really fun stuff there. And then we have a very nice, in the beginning of an endless adventure and just some information about Winnie the Pooh, a really nice drawing there of the kid and everything. And then some really nice, like, colored illustrations of all the characters hanging out together. Maybe Rabbit is a girl. I can't tell. I don't know. Um, welcome to the 100 Acre Wood. And just some more information there. Picture of, uh, picture of Winnie and Lego and what it actually looks like in the illustrations. Some really great designs here. More illustrations. Um, you know, Winnie the, Winnie the Pooh's best friends forever. Just so, so cool. I love, I love this. Wow, it's just gorgeous. Information about all of them, some more drawings here. It's just a very beautiful instruction manual. And then we have a picture of the designer here, Ben Adler. I uh, saw a blurb about him. And then a picture of the original submission. Wow, look how much it changed. That's crazy. But yeah, really nice. Great you have a Lego set made. Uh, man, your family looks great. I'm very happy for you. This is a really awesome opportunity. So cool. Then here's some information about the Lego team designers. Really cool. Oh, they have a little stuffed animal. And some very, very nice comments from them as well. And then information about how to use the brick separator. Kind of cool. I haven't seen that before. And we jump into the actual instructions here. And just goes through all the instructions. In the back, we have the parts list as per usual. And then an advertisement for how Lego Ideas works, along with some other sets that have recently become made. Very, very tempting, considering getting that one. Is that really the size comparison? That feels wrong. I feel like this box is bigger than that one. I don't know. Whatever. But yeah. And then we have uh, win uh, feedback and win. And that's about it. Pretty simple instruction manual. But wow. Those illustrations are gorgeous. This is something I wish LEGO did more often. Beautiful, beautiful manual. All right. Even though it hurts me to do so, this set gets an 8 out of 10. I had to deduct two points because the leaves are a pretty serious flaw. However, that's the only flaw. This set for $100 represents excellent value. It contains five, well, technically four unique minifigures and one unique character, every single one utilizing a brand new mold and a ton of exclusive prints, which for Lego Ideas, <coughs> hey, I, I, they don't do exclusive molds. They had to change it for this set. And I'm a-okay with that set and the Sesame Street one. And I'm a-okay with that because this set would not have been anywhere as good as this one if they had to reuse old molds. So I'm really, really happy that this worked the way it did. I would highly recommend this set for $100, like I said, very fair. The five minifigures are great. 1,200 pieces isn't bad. You get a beautiful tree, a really nice house, and a very iconic build. The references and stickers in here are amazing. I'm not very well versed in the Winnie the Pooh show. I haven't watched it in years, so hopefully someone better than me in the comments down below could uh, highlight some of those. And I'm just blown away by how good this set is. But yeah, make sure to leave your thoughts about this set in the comment section down below. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you wish it could be improved? And let me know if you think there's going to be extra ones uh, in the future, maybe some different builds from different locations in the show. I definitely really appreciate the set. I think it's something that LEGO needed to do for a while, and I'm very glad to have it. And honestly, it's making me kind of want to go out and get the Sesame Street one, because if I like this one so much, I'm probably going to like that one too. But let me know in the comment section down below if that's something you'd like to see. That's pretty much everything I got for you guys today, though. A review of this set was something I've wanted to do for a while now. And hey, I am not sad at all that I bought this. I definitely think it was well worth my money, and it's going to look really nice on display in my room, which I actually did just fix up, so there might be another room tour in the future. Who knows? But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. That's everything I got for this video. As always, make sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section down below, and tell me what you want to see reviewed next. Old sets, new sets, whatever. I've got some really fun plans for the future, so stay tuned for those. Thank you guys, and I hope you all have a fantastic and safe rest of your day, and I'll catch you all in the very next video.